Today we're going to talk about something to eat. We're going to talk about a delicacy that fed prospectors in California and loggers in Washington. It became a major industry, but it was so tiny that you could hold it between your fingers. Meet the mighty Olympia oyster in the Mossback's Den. In the mid-19th century, America was experiencing an oyster mania. Oysters were abundant back east and on the Gulf Coast. People were eating oyster pies, roasted oysters, oyster stuffing, oysters of all kinds. As people moved out west, particularly those who followed the Oregon Trail, they had to make do with a diet of hardtack and beans. But when they got to the west coast, they found something amazing that pleased their palates. It was a native oyster, the only native oyster on the west coast from Puget Sound to Baja, California. Of course, native peoples on the coast had been eating Olympia oysters and clams and other shellfish for thousands of years and left the evidence in old repositories of dining debris we call shell middens. When the settlers got to the coast, they found vast beds of the native oyster and they dubbed it Olympia, or Oles for short. One of the greatest repositories was on the Pacific coast near Long Beach called Shoalwater Bay, now called Willapa Bay. It was a calm water estuary and it was a utopia for Olympia oysters. Oysterville is there and it came by its name very honestly. Northwesterners not only ate Olympia oysters, they sold Olympia oysters. The California gold rush was in full swing and California could not meet the demand for oysters. They shoveled them alive out of Shoalwater Bay. They put them in barrels or sacks, moistened them so they would stay alive, put them on a ship and sent them to San Francisco where they were enormously popular. In fact, we know that Mark Twain during his San Francisco period was a great Ole fan. 90% of the oysters consumed during the gold rush came from Washington territory. The oysters soon became ubiquitous in the West. With the coming of the railroads, they could be shipped to places like Denver, Butte, Spokane. Every saloon, high or low, fancy or not, served fresh oysters, along with whiskey and beer. In 1885, a group of Presbyterian church women in Portland, Oregon, published the very first Northwest cookbook called the Webfoot Cookbook. And in it, it contained a single recipe relating to a native species of the region, and that was a recipe for fried Olympia oysters. It was stuck between a recipe for devil crab and a hollandaise sauce for salmon. The recipe is very simple. You take about half a dozen Olympia oysters, you pat them into a little patty, gush them all together, you then roll them in some fresh egg with salt and pepper, uh, you then put it in some breadcrumbs, and fry it in a pan. The recipe recommended that it be served with cold slaw, which we know today as coleslaw. So we tried the recipe in the Mossback's Den. Here are fried oyster patties. You can see some fresh Olympia oysters on the half shell. You can see how small they are. We have our cold slaw here. They did, by the 1880s, you could make or get mayonnaise and you could also get fresh lemons from California. Here I go. Mmm. That really is good. I'm gonna take one of these little olies. Mmm. Oh, that's good. The Olympia oysters were so popular that they soon began to run out. One problem was overharvesting. Another problem was loss of habitat. Another problem was they took a long time to grow and they just didn't grow fast enough for the market. And by the beginning of the 20th century, Olympia oysters had pretty much declined as a main oyster food substance and had been replaced by imported oysters that were then grown in Washington waters. Often if you see oysters growing on rocks when you're down at the beach, they're not the native Olympias, they're from Japan and they've just kind of taken over. And some oyster companies grow them to this day. And you can go down and you can get a fresh Olympia oyster if you want. They're tiny, they're strongly flavored, 
They have a kind of coppery flavor, a metallic flavor, which some people like and some people don't. But believe me, they carry the sort of briny goodness of the sea. If you like oysters, I'm going to use an old beer ad slogan. You owe yourself an only. <laughs>